I say we call the meeting to order. I'll give, I'll give it's six o'clock on Thursday, September 21st, which should be the equinox, right? It's the first day of fall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same, amount, had of, come. same amount of day as night. And no, in six that's in June. No. Yeah. That's the longest day. We can talk after that. Okay, well, it's not on the agenda. All right, moving along. Welcome, everyone. It's daylight right now. We're letting it out while it's still daylight. People are like, if we want to do these Yeah. All right, so first item is set, adjust agenda. Any changes from anyone? No, those are It sounds like they're things. We're not. Yeah, we're not having a road. We don't usually, like, we just don't yeah. have them. They're right. not, like, agenda yep. items. They're just reports that we're not doing. Do you have them you're having? All right, sounds good. We're gonna roll with the agenda we have. Communication from the audience. Nobody in the audience and nobody on Zoom. Um, select board to approve minutes from last regular meeting, which is September the 7th. I thought they looked good. So, motion to approve minutes. Second. Oh, well, two seconds. One motion, two seconds. There you go. Uh, any comments or changes to the minutes or discussion? Oh. All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, uh, we're going to jump over the town manage manager report. He's probably going to join us at some point. Um, our road foreman is not able to make it tonight. Correct. Um, Harvard police report. That brings us to Mike Henry. <laughs> That's too quick. <laughs> Pressure's not on. Ready. Pressure's on. Uh, uh, pressure's on. You get quite a few points for being the only one to show up. I guess so. All right. So, good news is we finally got our cruiser back. Uh, the one that was flooded. Uh, it's working. Seems, seems to be working. We got everything going. Got the other one returned back to uh, uh, VSP. Thank you very much for loading that out to us. Oh, yeah. Um, and what I did. I did something a little bit different this time. I kind of wanted to go through, uh, because discussion came up about crime stats and that kind of stuff at uh, one of our meetings. And I made the uh, statement based on uh, uh, what I've been seeing, is crimes, crime stats have been going down. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I ran reports for uh, just a quarterly report yep. showing what we have and good news, I didn't lie. <laughs> it, uh, um, let's see if I can pass this out. So the first one that I'm going to pass out is basically what's called the NCIC uh, reports. We have everybody here. Oh, perfect. Let's so just take one, pass it down. That's from 2022. And I got the 2023 here. There was 104. NCIC reportable crimes for that quarter. Now I did the quarter a little bit differently just so we had that and that can compare that as well. Um, they, they went down significantly. So from one year uh, based on. For the sake of the audience, what does NCIC mean? So that's the national crime statistics, what we have to report okay. federally as a crime. So a burglary or a theft, uh, that's national crime. Are, is it safe to say that those reportable crimes are, are generally more serious than yes. other things that don't make the list? Yes. Okay. So when you look at our total incidents, uh, trying to, to take the top 10 total incidents, you'll see that things like fingerprinting come up quite a bit now. Right. Because uh, we're doing a lot of fingerprints. But Which is a great community service. It's a great community service. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, looking at that, it's less than half just for one quarter. And again, that's just a snapshot for starting from July 1st to uh, September 1st is the way I ran those stats. Like year over year? Like so? You just so yeah, 2022, yeah. Uh, same thing, yeah. same time frame. Um, and I, you know, I attribute that to the, uh, the step up enforcement that we had. Uh, it was, I, I think it's made a quite a difference. Uh, so just so I understand, Dan, this like if there's something, if there was a line that was in sure. 2022 but not in 23, that's assuming it didn't happen, right? Yes. Okay. No, yes. That means it went to zero. Yeah. Right. I mean, and a quick note that threw me off was 
the scale is not the same. So the right. lines are not the oh, same. Oh, thank you. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. Scale. Yeah. 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 So like Burgundy 4 in 2023 was actually down from, well, not down, but not, not up the same. significantly because of the scale. So yeah. So well, once you look at that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's Yep. Great. Got it. The that's an important point. So yeah, that's, that makes it look a lot better. When I thought I saw that, I was like, no, I'm not understanding something here. <laughs> Mike, so, somebody asked me, excuse me, Danny. No, go ahead. Somebody asked me recently, how many officers do we have on the force? We have uh, uniform officers. We have four full-time, and we have three part-time. And that does not count the chief. That does not count the chief. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. So, and uh, trying to do the math with 24-hour coverage, seven days a week, that's where we that's are you, really, it's really we're thin. tight. Yeah, yeah. We're very tight. We're in such a different world these days. So. Yeah. I've been um, working in Barry the last two days driving up that main street. So, place. yeah, we wow. do not want to end up like Barry. No, no, but we're close. I see the same things in higher class. Well, same thing, but not the same scale, I would say. Um, no, absolutely not. Yeah. But but, population, I mean, I see junkies staggering around in Barry, I see junkies staggering around in Yeah, right and the other day. I mean, so that's, that's the one problem that we do have is a lot of the drug crimes are non, uh, they're becoming non criminal. At this point. Yeah, these people aren't hurting nobody. They're, yeah, they're just, not hurting anybody. They just hurt themselves. Yeah, they're going to hurt somebody else. They're going to hurt me when they call out one of my dump trucks. Mm -hmm. So uh, drug use is still on the rise. Yeah. No, this is a different year. I don't have, oh. uh, yeah, year over year again. Yeah, point that it's really becoming so that you see it, and, and it's, it's disturbing to, to me. Okay, so now we're looking at incidents instead of reportable. These are, so yes. incidents are sort of the log of everything, log right? Log of everything, yeah. yeah. So our incidents have actually gone down. Uh, you know, there were 530, uh, excuse me, there were 760 last year for that quarter. And this quarter is down to 530, I think it is, mm -hmm. yeah, something like that, to that effect. Yeah, but honestly, that's just simply the traffic stops to mm -hmm. make up that number. Pretty close. I mean, you know, up, you know clearly we were, the emphasis was on traffic last year. Right. It, it made a huge difference in getting what we, what we were looking for. Yeah. Getting the results we were looking for. Getting the actual crime to come down. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? When you look at how many, you know. The, yeah. The incidents. Yeah. The incidents. Uh, that was. Right. Which. Now it's, you know, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but it was like shooting fish in a barrel before. Now. Right. It's a little more it's it's a little bit more tame. Not, not a big piece of the puzzle. Right. And I think it might be this is totally anecdotal, but there's so much more of a visual presence of the HPD now. I think I'm at least speaking for East Harvick, you know, right. you see officers driving around more and I don't know if that's like a part of people behaving a little bit better in terms of driving, but it just feels like that you're out there yep. patrolling, you know. Great. So that's just a snapshot of yeah. the order. Uh, again, in June to 1st of September, not a regular third quarter, but that's what I call it. Um, so, and yeah, you know, what I tried to pull, I was just trying to pull the stats different ways, and I think, right. that's, the, yeah. I think that's the best way to look at it mm -hmm. is from there. Yep. Yeah. So you, you kind of do have to look from a couple different angles to try to get an idea. And I think everything else, uh, I don't have too much else okay. for us tonight. Good job. I think things are going good. Um, I don't think it was a good time to mention it, Mike, but at our last meeting, I think you had logged off, but we talked about wanting to have a conversation about parking. Oh. It's not tonight, because <laughs> it's not on the agenda, right. but it would be great, especially because yeah. we're working on, you know, we're working yes. on, on, you're already working on that parking ordinance. And so maybe we can have a task well, force. He's not working on that. I, I haven't had time to work on that, but I will. No. Well, you need some directions too. Yes. Before you yeah, start. he he needs to not be doing that by himself. And yeah. I yeah. It it really won't take long. That's why I, I asked mean, if we couldn't put together a little task force. 
task force yeah. um, that would help, but we did not do that. There, there are some questions as, as to what's going to stay parking, what's going to stay handicap parking, what's right. going to change. So that's, that's what started this whole conversation. So I would like to have all that in place before I sit down and start working yeah. on the parking ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to sort that out yeah. amongst ourselves. Right. Uh, but I do see uh, the need to keep the spaces open in front of Positive Pie uh, for the truckers. In the intersection. In the intersection for the truckers that are coming through because that's, uh, when people start parking there, uh, it uh, it's tough for the truckers to get through there. Yeah, and the, and that's the reason why it changed. But um, right, well, we did point we was. did talk about it in the planning commission meeting last, and there are recommendations coming. So it's a topic for next meeting, maybe. Can we just create a task force, or do we need to wait to? We might as well wait until the next meeting. Okay. Look maybe at we'll, it. maybe they'll be the recommendations. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't care. Brenda. My point was not whether we took them or kept them, because we're going to enforce whatever we got. Mm -hmm. That was more along my, what my, when yeah. I started it, it was about, it wasn't about right or wrong or what we're going to do, it was about enforce it or do away with it. Right. And we, we've tried to softly start working that way towards enforcement. We didn't, because we've been yeah. letting that go a little bit, we didn't want to just all of a sudden start mm -hmm. handing out tickets. Right. So, uh, and we need, to, we need to get better at that. Uh, getting down there, but unfortunately, that's well, they're volunteered yeah. to talk to They're scary. Oh, they're scary. Oh, you did. Oh. <laughs> you did that. Yeah, I'm not going to Bouncing around the room. All right. Hot potato. Thank you, Mike. And we're going to talk about parking next time, sounds like. All right. So, next up, uh, we're going to also pass over Hard of Electric Report because we don't have anyone from Hard of Electric here. So item one, business manager to present proposed water and sewer rates for fiscal year 24. Um, and so, uh, who met? Tanya, Opie, Casey, me, Kaylee was on the phone. We met and um, with one substantial interruption, but we got through the rates reasonably well. So did everybody get a chance to review these or? Does it make sense to just kind of explain a little bit what we were trying to do? With the so I think. Well, I was gonna. Yeah. Oh, gonna have this, okay. Yeah, I was gonna explain. Um, so we have an expense budget of three hundred twelve thousand eight hundred eleven dollars. We are just striving to meet the expenses. Um, we looked yep. at what. And this we, is water. Water yep. first. Water sorry. First. Yes. Yep. Um, so we uh, looked at what we collected in fiscal year 23 um, and the usage. And based on that data, um, we decided that we would not need to increase the base rate, that we would increase the usage rate from 0 0.008 to 0 0.0085. So very, very nominal, um, but the base rates will stay the same on water and we'll just do a slight increase on the usage. Any uh, thoughts or questions on that? I think it encourages conservation, which is a good thing. Yeah. I do notice that this was a very wet summer. Not a lot of lawn uh, sprinkling, garden sprinklers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, a drier summer might have caused more usage. Mm -hmm. right. And we still met our usage budget in fiscal year 2040. Like yeah. we might have been just a smidge over, but we um, we were able to. It came out what, where we expected. So that's water. Any questions about water? That's always the easier one. There we go. Yeah, water is the smaller one and doesn't yeah. have a huge so construction project. So no increase project. on the base rate on that, and just a like smidgen of an increase on the usage. So, um, moving on to sewer. So as a reminder, um, we actually are not going to have our first bond payment in fiscal year 24. It actually won't be till fiscal year 25 because of the timing of the project being finished. Um, however, we'll still want to set us we are our expense budget factors in um, transfer to capital or the bond payment. So um, 
The expenses for sewer are just under 520,000, um, so that's what we need to raise. So we are looking at roughly a 3% increase on the base rate. Um, what this is is about $14 annually for a typical residential household. Um, commercial, it's about $40 a year, $10 a quarter. Um, so it's, it's really pretty reasonable, $14 a year. Um, so um, so $3.50 a quarter, $3.50 a quarter is what we're looking at. And then on the usage, similar, we're going from 0 0.013 to 0 0.0135, just adding a little smidge to, um, and again, we feel that that lines up with what we collected and that it, and, and the amount of usage. So about a 3% increase and a smidge on the usage for sewer. So basically the funding the overall funding concept and formula remains essentially the same for both water and sewer. Yep. Water gets just a bump on the overage. Sewer has um, a 3% increase to the base rate plus a smidge on the overage. Yes. And that does factor in a bond payment, like the amount of a bond payment. So, so there won't be a huge increase the following year. Correct. Right. Yeah, unless something like some other and not mean to stick expense, but no, ultimately that sh should be pretty steady. So, I I motion. Uh, motion to approve the proposed water and sewer rates for FY24. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, I just have a really good question about while we're on the topic for the, do we have any idea of how many folks, we always talk every year about the unmetered users, and usually we have a goal of trying to get a couple people on systems. Mm -hmm. I know last year it was tricky with the supply chain, there was like a bunch of supply chain issues. Do we have a goal this year? Of, it's tricky because it's basically all the trailers and it's hard to, if they're, there's some things that are just like are almost impossible to hook up to the system. So well, so it's more that it's the availability of the meter pits and people yeah, that right. dig the holes. Right. It's a project. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it'd be nice to have You said page. that if you, and you get. We were going to pull the trigger on, what, a dozen of them in, at, the, at the new fiscal year. Yeah. And it just, we had the. Uh, we got flooded. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But so the funding is still there right. in our budget. Our water capital is, is strong to do mm -hmm. this. So we could do it if if there's availability of personnel to do it. Mm -hmm. well, it'd be nice to just have like an annual poll to try and get whatever, 10 a year on. Right. It makes a big difference for people. I agree. All right, so that remains the Un, the getting the remainder of the unmetered people metered remains. There's so about 80. Yeah. 82 is the number. Right? Yeah. 81. 73. There are more for water than sewer, which surprised me, but. Some folks only are. have water. Only have water. Uh. All right. Next is item two select board to discuss. Oh, before I move to my. To I was just, yes, sorry, that's what I was just going to do. do you, so, <coughs> Mr. Upson, do you want to share anything with us? Because we skipped over you before. Yes, I was getting the show started. Yeah. Good. We were getting the show started up here. <laughs> Tomorrow night, Saturday, Saturday matinee. Um, we started, we had our initial meeting with the union rep for the police department. Uh, we just set the ground rules today, Amanda and I sat in on that meeting. Um, the borings for the bridge are happening next week, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. They're gonna start on the Daniels side. This is the pedestrian bridge? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, FEMA mitigation was here um, Tuesday, Wednesday, yesterday. Um, we met down at the wastewater plant, collecting information. Um, we provided them with a cost to rebuild the plant in its current location. 
um, that was provided to us by Alrich and Elliott. So their mitigation is working on a cost-benefit analysis. We provided them with the historical information of when, how often the building has been flooded, losses, the current status of the building, the, um, the cost to bring it back up to um, full operation, which we're not there. Um, or close, but then um, the cost of rebuilding and replacing everything to pre flood. So we're providing FEMA with, with the numbers that they're requesting. Um, on the mitigation side, we're also in conversation with the public assistance side. Um, we added um, the, the disaster inventory has been um, submitted and updated as things roll in, but I think we pretty much have everything inventoried. Um, the East Hardwick Bridge, or the, the East Hardwick, uh, Green, or the Greensboro Bend East Main Street Bridge was added most recently. Um, the director, the, the area director is gonna be up there on Tuesday of next week to qualify that because the day of the destruction was reported late um, because it just happened, so he's gonna come up and look at it. We provided him with the most recent bridge inspection report that was done in 21, and they just did one after it was damaged. So we have good evidence that that bridge was in, in good shape. And what's interesting is that you can see the water level has changed because of the standard mountain brook that's come down and dammed up. Um, there's a tributary yeah, yeah. Just, just downstream there, and so it's backed up that river. And so the abutments that were normally, um, the, the footings to the abutments that were normally at water level or a little higher are now three or four feet up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so um, that's in, and all these bridge reports, which um, we'll, yeah. we're gonna go over tonight, those are available to the public. Yeah. Um, they're on the VTrans website and you can go and check them out. Um, Fisher Folly Bridge is their um, they've started on the project, uh, and I know the bridge has been loaded uh, on the trailer down in Berlin, and Austin Construction will be tying that bridge together, uh, putting it together um, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, next week. Hmm? Just the way we do things, you know, it's, <clears throat> they're, we're spending money that so they're walking that escalator back and forth across the existing bridge, carrying those Jersey barriers the other day. I'm like, where are they? Yeah, clearly. Done. Ah! <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, it's not our call, first of all, but it is what it is. You right. Know what I'm saying? I mean, I did. I requested four bridges, um, four p uh, temporary bridges and we were given one and because there was still there was a residence there um, i don't i know that the bridge the state bridge team looked at all four of those requests and they and they authorized the temporary bridge on fisher folly so uh, i'm hoping that if they thought it could be repaired they would have said that well yeah but so i agree it wasn't fixed but it was a temporary bridge that's capable of holding up that right. 40,000 pound excavator is capable of lasting until we put a new bridge in without putting a temporary bridge in. Right. right. That's not our call. So that, I get it, it's just the way Yeah, we're that doing. money, that those these temporary fixes will be reimbursed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by... I mean, it's kind of the same thing. By 75% and the then... one up on every farm is... By state, too. It's perfectly fine. The one that John put in? Right. Well, no, they've, that's a temper, that was a bridge that was put in by Lagos. Right, but what I'm saying is, is right. move on. What I'm saying is these temporary fixes are temporary. They're serviceable. Right. They're serviceable. I mean, that's the same thing that they're going to be doing on the rail trail. But I don't want to get involved in that. <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. Sure. Um, so, with the East Main Street Bridge, um, Tom's been getting quotes to demo that. We got one quote um, from C-Card for $102,470. Um, and that's just to remove the bridge. Wait, wait, 
says East Main Street. East oh, in the Bend. In the Bend. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Say again. I got lost right in the beginning. One hundred two thousand four hundred seventy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's just to remove the bridge so it doesn't fall into the Lamoille, and then armor the bank and and close the road for the winter. Is, wow. And is that going to cause? Any issues? I know it causes inconvenience, but well, it, does it cause any like right. safety issues or anything I mean, like that? Does it need to? Yeah. We haven't had the conversation yet about a temporary bridge for that location yet either. So okay. I don't. I mean, for me, I don't understand why that would be a necessity for that bridge. You think sure. going around is okay? Yeah, go, the, go, go up to go the a quarter mile up the road and use that bridge. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, doesn't, it makes no sense to. And right. Given that we've got. I Four or five that. other ones. That right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm just asking the question. No, but I mean, yeah. it's it'd be convenient. So that is that the, done, that's, that's the convenient. reason. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that, I mean, that's going to need a hydraulic study. Yeah. Because the river has changed. Yeah. The <clears> Fisher <throat> Folly abutments are going to need a hydraulic study because that river exploded its banks. And mm. so. Fixing the old bridge, and this is where it, this is this is what I wrestle with. Like, they wanted to know if they want if I wanted to tear the abutments out, and I said no, leave the abutments there, because who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, don't tear them out now. I'm right. Until we Give, given what we run into with the pedestrian bridge, mm -hmm. I'm I'm leaving them there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, <coughs> and, and work. they kind of agreed. The the state kind of agreed just to leave it the way it is and throw a temporary bridge over the top of it. So that's where we're at. Okay. Um, Excuse me. The watershed protection program. Last week we went to six six or seven properties. That's a federal program for properties that artificial structures that are in that are potential being damaged by further erosion on the river. Um, and I haven't heard back yet from um, the person doing the inspections. I have heard back from um, the historic preservation folks that are going to go now and look at those properties to make sure there's no archaeological stuff or historical disturbances or anything like that. Are these residences? Private residences. And we requested, we had to request the, to take part in the program as sponsors for these residences that are in danger of losing further damage for the property. The river has taken out the motel twice. Right. And this time they're not one of them. It took out I didn't think so. Yeah. It took out a lot more of the river. Right. A lot more of the land, which means that its power is going a different directive. And I was thinking about the next, mm -hmm. where is it going to go next? And that's going to begin to erode mm -hmm. the business community in the village. Right. And wondered if there's a similar program that could be applied. That program. That program. Yeah. And they looked at properties in the in the village. Okay. Yeah. So they're also looking at business properties. Mm -hmm. Um. I think that's all I got for now. Mm -hmm. That's quite a bit. Yeah. Opie, did we, was there any follow up with the SBA panel, FEMA panel that was brought to us last meeting? Is mm -hmm. that going to happen? I mean, only if, only if we want to request it. Okay. And I, I don't see a need to request to have FEMA officials in front of the community. I think, um, I think we've done it. Right, I think we've done a pretty good job with handling. And by the time we organize it, the deadline's October 12th, so. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, we're still putting, neighbor to neighbor, still putting people in touch with, or folks that are reaching out to neighbor to neighbor, they're still putting people in touch with our volunteer consultants to help with paperwork. We've processed all of the buyouts that were probably in a process and submitted that to the state. Um, so I think we're in good shape. Okay. They're talking like long-term recovery group stuff now, um, whether we partner with Lamoille or the Northeast Kingdom. And Helen Beatty's working on that. 
in, in partnership with us. So. Thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've been busy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know we didn't hear about everything, so thank you. Is there something that I missed? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm sure other stuff has been happening in your world. Your, um, rep your report is just a synopsis of what's happened. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, we have... I'm not thinking of anything specific. I just <laughs> greater here, greater's here, greater's here. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I heard it was in town. Yeah, we'll That's talk good. about that too. Okay. When? Uh, Next. It's in here. Yeah. Okay. Next, let's, uh, that's a perfect segue. Oh. Let's move on to item number two, select board to discuss methods of borrowing for the purchase of the loader and grader. Um, so we have it, now we just have to pay for it. <laughs> or not, you know, I mean, possession, right? It's right. supposed to be nine tenths of the law. I don't know where that's written, but everybody says it. It's actually, I've used that one a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tell us, um, are so you telling us about this, Casey? Yeah. So we had some different options. There was cat financing through Milton Cat, where we purchased it from. There was tax exempt leasing, and then we also got a quote from our local bank, Union Bank. Um, so we had three different options, and in the end, the best interest rate, the most favorable interest rate, was Union Bank. So that would be the preferred method um, at 5.39, and then the other one was 5.69 and 5.99. So they, they're they definitely higher than when we first estimated. Um, we put in the budget for fiscal year 24, $55,000 annual payment for these two pieces of equipment, the grader and the loader. However, because interest rates are a little bit higher, it's gonna end up being about 57. That's so pretty close bit, though. It's close, yeah. We, um, we had put in 55,000 in the budget for payment. So my big question is, then we have to have a vote if we're going to borrow money. That was our big question too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and VLCT, so so we had the same question. We reached out to Eli Emerson, who's the lawyer that sets up the borrowing for the bond bank, and he quoted um, Paul Giuliani, who was a municipal attorney back in the day, provided us with an email. Um, explaining that highway, the select board has um, the, the the required to provide um, well main, or maintained roads, mm -hmm. and this is road maintenance equipment. Mm -hmm. So it's a budget, it's budgeted as well already. We well, it. it I I don't want I know that, and I know that. The payments are budgeted, but as far as just borrowing money, um, VLCT says five years. Under five highway, years. Highway equipment is the only exception. And highway equipment is the only exception. Okay, so we reached out to Paul, and then I reached, after I got Paul's email, Wait, you, or Paul. Eli, after I got his response that we could indeed take out a loan to pay for the grader as highway road equipment and it can be longer than five years without a vote. I wasn't necessarily comfortable with an attorney citing another uh, attorney who's deceased and although he is the highly regarded the guru yeah. of, of municipal law, um, I reached out to our attorney, mm -hmm. Ed, um, and he provided us with uh, a more in-depth explanation, um, which we can provide, that says that it's okay to borrow this money to pay for highway road equipment because the, the select board has a, a obligation, statutory obligation to maintain the roadways. The only catch is your loan term can exceed the useful life of the asset. Right. Well, and we're all set there because it's 10 years and we'll probably keep these for 15 and I'm getting a depreciate he suggested that I get the depreciation schedule from mm -hmm. Milton Cat as documentation to show that we're not borrowing longer than the de than the equipment is worth right or like it's a use of life so the way I look at that is we've got two municipal attorneys that says it's okay and we're doing this to save money. 
And if somebody has a problem with it, we have an attorney who's already provided us with the explanation as to our, we, we can legally do it. And if, if we're fought on it, we can provide documentation about justification why. as to why. And the fact that it's already built into the budget, I think, is a very comfortable. It's not a legal argument, but it's a good um, it's a good justification to for the public oh, right. for like just to. We've anticipated this. Yes, and this is what we've been planning to do. Right. Does it make sense to include language about that in the motion so that way it's like super clear that we? You guys are pretty panicky tonight. Did I miss something? Somebody <laughs> coming after us or something? <laughs> No, I'm just, just I'm it. just used to, to having a, a vote when we have bonds, and so this is different, it sounds like, because it well, is a highway. A big part of the vote for the it's bond been challenged is because in, this, in order to get a bond, you need to have a vote. And it's been challenged in the Supreme Court. We're not getting, no. we're not getting a bond. We're, we're borrowing money. But if, we were, but if we were borrowing something that wasn't for the road crew, it wasn't for maintaining roads, Correct. we, we couldn't would take out a 10 year loan without have a vote. To have a vote. Yes. I don't Sounds like Highway equipment is the only you exception. You don't want it. Even though they're lowest rate. Yeah. What? Why not? Because I don't like it. What, <laughs> what, like what bank do you want to use? Anybody but them. Uh oh. <laughs> But if they're giving us the lowest rate, there's the most There's a town's bank, too. You, you can vote they, you, They're my bank, too, made. but they're not going to be forever, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're off the topic. Okay. Oh, Call the vote. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody Call else have anything to say? <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Like, like Tanya? 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 Anybody? 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 So, just one thing in this, they say that we have to have minutes awarding the bid to Union Bank, so we just want to make sure we specify Union Bank in the motion. Yeah, or somebody, if we don't have a motion yet, so if somebody, um, hang on, have, where is this? Yes, I move this. that we accept the Union Bank's bid for on the purchase price of the loader and grader. For? For $432,000. For terms of ten years, but we can pay it back with no penalty for prepayment. An interest rate at five point three nine. There we go. That's a pretty comprehensive motion, I think. Mm -hmm. Second. Casey, you happy with all that? Sure. Okay. Um, you too. I think that's we have what we need in there. Okay. Any more discussion? Uh, all in favor of borrowing money for the loader and greater from Union Bank, please say aye. 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 Yep. Well, I'm going to say yes because it's the best thing. <laughs> Danny says yes, but under, uh, under duress. Under, yeah. <laughs> duly noted. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, Next is item three select board to review and discuss East Hardwick Bridge near Post Office. This is. Uh, Another Main Street, right? We had East Main Street we were talking about earlier. It's known as Main Street. This is the only Main Street in Hardwick. Right, because South and North are over here. East is in the bend, and yeah. Main Street's in the East Hardwick. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. <laughs> make any sense. So, I read the report, and um, what do we need to do? I read the report. Yeah, what do we need to do? What's, what? It just looked to me like we got to fix the button. Mm -hmm. There's a road in behind the abutment. We've got to fix the We've done that. Oh, it's done? It's already a done deal. So yeah. what are we talking about? That's great. So I had asked that this be on, the, be on yeah. the agenda just to let folks know, because there were some questions in East Hardwick about if the bridge, you know, how the bridge was doing. So it was mainly just an opportunity for mm -hmm. us to that. say. Make sure that you let them know that they can get this report. Yep. And actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do it as an attachment to the minutes. Oh, good idea. Um, and, and then, yeah. Um, one of the bridge team, supervisors is more than happy i spoke with him this afternoon is more than happy to come to a select board meeting and walk us through one of these um reports if we need to um he kind of gave me a little crash course but basically this is the information sheet tells you about the bridge and then you go to the ratings 
and you have a deck in fair condition, um, and you have the superstructure in fair condition, and then you have the substructure in fair condition. And when they say that it's in fair condition, they inspect it every two years. Oh, is that more frequently than if it was like in good condition? Um, or if it was less than a five in fair condition, it would be inspected every year. So right. this is a two-year inspection. And, okay. and the only or the only things that are poor are the fascia. The fascia. So basically, salt oh. is eaten away the the surface Spalling, of Spalling, they call it. Spalling, right. and Which we knew because we right. had, John Jewett had the guy fix some of it. And, and he so. said that don't get nervous with the spalling and don't waste your money on the spalling because yes, it doesn't. there's no, um, it's no structural structure. integrity in that fascia. So yep. And then when the bridge, he told me not to quote him on this, but he said, um, 10 to to 15, 15 years we're looking at replacement. That's a rugged bridge. Yeah. 10 to 15 years. Which is the same report we've gotten every time we've dealt with it. It's, it's yeah. not perfect, but yeah. it's... So basically, it's, it's one not that's ready, actually standing on its own. But right it's structurally now. sound. Yeah. 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 It's not so perfect. are we budgeting a long term? term. We, we have, have a we have capital. It, there's a capital mm -hmm. line, yeah. um, East Harvard Bridge or Bridge. It's like 170 like that. Yep, there's and we have, so yeah. it, in this um, bridge, bridge improvement costs and roadway improvement costs uh, for a total of $523,000 um, to, to replace the bridge. So it'll be six to seven hundred thousand by the right. time we do it. It'll be three million by the time we yeah. do it. You guys are. <laughs> oh, yes, you ain't doing nothing for five hundred thousand. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's currently um, four hundred and ten cars uh, for average daily traffic, and in future twenty twenty nine. There's 431 cars. But it's critical it. access for yeah, yeah. services mm -hmm. and stuff. So right. it's that's one that we got to make sure that. Right. And this is where we're, we had talked before about including this in the master plan for East Harbeck, right? Correct. So for that, the better connection. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Great. I mean, that's an important one. And then is there on the, I know we put in stone on the left, if you're standing in the river on the left hand side. Is the, there, are you talking about like the. Where the, the washout was after by yeah. the Overlook Park. Okay, so the west abutment in approach. Yeah. Okay. Are we just putting anything in the east abutment then? We are. We will. Um, we're waiting on what if the river house is going to have um, the watershed protection program okay. funds to do that. So eventually, that's going to go in there. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Thanks for the update. Yeah, and I got your email also about the culvert, this the storm drain, and, and I do want to get that taken care of. Yeah. The culvert that goes down. It's not very big. It's no, a small I know. culvert, it's, but it's just yeah. nasty. Yeah. Oh, gosh. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, look forward to review and consider supporting a statement provided by the Equity Committee. Oh, that's me. That's you. Okay, so um, the Equity Committee has brought statements before the select board before, and typically we um, we bring statements before the select board when there's been either like a national or local incident of racism. So the last one um, was about um, right after the uh, the. Asian American incidents, and so we approved a statement about that. And so this um, this incident that we are were writ, wrote this about happened basically right before the flooding, and then the flooding happened, and then everything was crazy. Um, but there was a, a an incident, and there was a link in the e in the email that I sent, but um, to the article, there was an incident of racism in Lindenville that we felt like was really close to home, um, and. So the equity committee wanted to um, basically create a statement for the select board that reaffirms the resolution that we've already approved. Um, I can go ahead and just read it. Great. Um, 
In light of the incident that I was just mentioning, at a queer poetry event in Lindenville, the Hardwick Equity Committee and Select Board affirm the right of all artists and performers in our midst to personal safety. We value the contributions of the queer and BIPOC members of our community. We appeal to our fellow community members to join us in actively working to keep us all safe, thriving, and able to freely contribute our diverse gifts and perspectives to the world without threat. We call on the town and other institution and organiza organizations to bring appropriate resources to bear to ensure that individuals who are being harassed or threatened are safe. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, the select board thing. This is a select board thing. I'm struggling with it. As a, as a select well, board thing. Well, yeah, but. it's a select board thing to do based on a newspaper report of an incident in a neighboring town. I mean, I'm mean, not for it. I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just. We're community uh, leaders, Danny. So we're just reaffirming yeah, that we fine. want people to feel safe, I think. Right. And essentially what I said, Danny, I just, the, this, in terms of an it. action, I think the, every time we recommend a statement, it's reaffirming that that resolution that we passed Mm -hmm. still exists and we still stand behind it and that we're supporting everybody in our community. It's just a reminder of, of that. So Great. it's basically just to be on record that we yep. want people to feel safe. I move we adopt it. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Yeah, I think I'm just going to abstain. Okay. Motion carries. I, I just think it's, I don't know, it's the whole, I mean, yeah, I, I'm an old white guy, so <laughs> I, I think everyone should be kind to everybody and yep. everyone should feel safe. I don't yep. think we should make a statement of any particular anything. Should be getting a, Well, we shouldn't need to, but. We shouldn't we need, need to, to, but we pick on fat old white guys too. I don't. I feel sorry. I'm just for saying. I'm just <laughs> hey, hey, let's not. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's, if we, we love you. Recognize Noted. The community being safe, everyone should be safe. I agree. We should totally. be just queer and BIPOC right. people. Right. Everybody should. Yes. That's all I'm saying. And yeah. That's and that's what the overall resolution says. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So just add fat white guys in there, and I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um, select board reports. I think that's implied. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's just not good. I hate to single anybody out for anything, yeah. no matter what you are. I think my personal feeling is that's part of the problem. Is sometimes we're the society we're in over singles people out for different things instead of anytime you single someone out or something out. Then it becomes an individual, then it suffers. No matter who you are. Or other people feel left out. Right. So, anyway, just letting you know how I feel, that's all. I appreciate your honesty. So, um, the downtown retreat happened at the Grand Isle Lake House this oh, yeah. week. Um, Gary Michaels, who's the treasurer of the Hardwick Downtown Partnership, and myself attended, and it was really good. I'm going to we'll have a, more of a report next. Uh, next meeting because we have a downtown partnership meeting next week and but it was yeah it's things are going well if there's a lot to report could you put it there's in an email for us yeah thank you there's easier for me to digest there's a little um but yeah thank you. it was a good experience and always worthwhile to do those retreat things because you get to yeah find out what's going on in the other downtowns as well and find out what the state's trying to do and try to, to support the downtowns and all that. So it was a good thing. Good. Um, the Historical Society will be closing. Our last day open to the public is next Thursday. Uh, but if you want to make an appointment for whatever reason, go to our website and send us an email and we will respond. That mean it's getting on towards winter? It's getting on <laughs> towards winter. Yeah. And, and it's getting cold where we work. Right. <laughs> um, I'd like to make a report about the Yellow Barn Project. <laughs> I would like yes. to. Yeah, yeah. 
I was waiting. That stoplight really makes it so you can watch the uh, watch the progress. Oh, right. <laughs> well, we shouldn't be single. Is that that project? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's ahead of, it appears to be ahead of the library. At least they're still moving dirt around down there. They're not going. To, they're not going anywhere with the dirt, but they're trucking it around. We should give them the microphone for like five minutes. <laughs> that is kind of the report, actually. Smart contaminated moving soil. Around. Yeah, moving dirt around. So, man, starting with the highlights. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the barn is back down on this brand new concrete. Oh, place. I didn't see that. Since yesterday. Yes, it did happen since yesterday. Wow. So it's sitting down again with a lot of new framing to replace rotted sills. Yep. So looking good. It looks a lot straighter than it did, too. It turns out if you put a flat foundation under an old building, it could still be straight and true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was done correctly, and they looked like they did an outstanding job jacking that up, straight hand up. Yeah, so that's good. Um, and gravel construction is the, the site contractor sub, and they have got, I think, two of the four sides of the footing for the new building excavated, and they started rebuilding that, like doing gravel and sand, so that's really good. But to Danny's initial comment about their soil moving around but not going anywhere, um, I just want to let everybody know that we, we are working through the contaminated soils issues down there still. Um, and the town of Hardwick has applied for Brownfields funding to help get um, dispose of the soils. So they've decided that it's definitely all contaminated? No, not all of it, but some of it. And then it becomes a question of there's an awful lot of soil and we said, okay, we'll test it this way. And we start testing that way. And then somebody says, well, that's not really that great. Let's right. test it this other way. And then you're like, well, half of it is now, half of what's left shows test contaminated, the other half test clean. Where's the boundary? Right. It's all in the same pile. It's all, it's all. So anyway, that's where we are. We have, but we've engaged with the folks who are the professionals who are involved from DEC and from mm. Brownfields and our own consultant and uh, everybody's meeting on site on Monday and we're going to um, come together on a path forward. And would that be us creating a brownfield in Harnock or? No. So what actually happens to the soil, it turns out that what you should do with this type of contaminated soil is you well, should you must do. Or you must do is you should truck it to Coventry and have it live over there because that's better. So it becomes like a topping for the or it's, whatever. It's going to be used as daily cover. So yeah. apparently they end yeah. up every day, they have to cover stuff up. Yeah. yeah. And so but ultimately it stays within the liner. Yeah. Within the cat. Yeah. They do that with a lot of different debris. So anyway, that's what's oh, happening. Man. Um, but the project is still moving we aren't yet like falling off schedule but we really need to get this uh, resolved mm -hmm. just like and we throw a little bridge project in there just for <laughs> shits and giggles to just, just to add another excavator <laughs> and that that project was slated to happen anyways right I, I knew um, that, but also i think that um, i've had a lot of people reach out to me now that the yellow barn has kicked off and the public is asking a lot of questions and I think it's important to say that um, that we purchased the property with grant funds and yeah. an economic development loan. Yep. And the town will be reimbursed. That economic development loan will be we'll reimbursed be with interest. Yeah. Um, and obviously the grants are spread out through um, the state and the federal federal tax base. Right. And that the financial burden on the town of Hardwick for this project is very minimal. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot to gain economically from this project. Right. Um, so I think that's a misconception out there that we're funding. Well, this. yeah, it, it should be. But I, I, to the people that are refused to listen, because right. we've <laughs> done a great job of explaining that right. time and time again. But I think it just constantly needs to be explained. Yep. It's yeah, like, especially now that it's so visible. Right. It's kind of like those TV shows there. And you, every time they go to commercial, they go start back over. Yeah. <laughs> the recap. Yeah. Recap everything they've done before that. Yeah. 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 So the you're Discovery right. Discovery Channel stuff. It's yeah, like, it's really yeah. important. So. I've said that four times now. 
Yeah, and the town will continue to own the property. To but in the end, um, we partnered with a nonprofit to run it and lease it to tenants. It. And um, it's not on the tax rolls because it's town owned, but we will be collecting payment in lieu of tax on it. Roger. Okay. John Jewett had a wonderful big chart. There's another, there's a really good flow chart. Um, that was, I mean, it just was amazing. <coughs> yeah. All the funds and all that. Yeah, heard. about it's been first updated. you buy this yeah. and then that. And is, Anybody seen him this summer? It needs to be, it could be, I haven't seen Celebrity Street. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's another one that's. Yeah, I usually yeah. do, but yeah. I haven't, I, mean, I didn't see John. Smoke and mirrors is what comes to my mind <laughs> yeah, for this. Yeah. House of cards. Yes. All right. Okay. I'm hungry. Yeah. No, you folks there. Yeah. So uh -oh. since we didn't have a HED report, uh, but I, you know, I had a younger man last night who was in search of a charger, an EV charger, somewhere close by because he needed one. Apparently, the two at Lamoille Valley Ford are not working, um, and he, and so I just, I wanted to ask. Tonight, what, when the one at HED is supposed to happen? That's already there. Yeah. Well, it's not on the map for people who are looking for a charger because I, oh. I, he, you know, I got him on the Wi-Fi so he could look and so I could see whether it was there because I don't use it, so I don't know that it's there. But now, next time I'll tell him it's here. But you know, Bad so name. the map said that the closest one was the one in East Montpelier, so it's a shame. Yeah. Did you ever have it too? We should, also, they, we should also who put did in, they not tell they that they have a charger there? Well, Everybody. Well. Did um, you ever hear from the Royal Valley? They said they were going to do it on their own. Oh, yeah, there's two down. There's two right, down there. but there's yeah. going to be some more. Were they going to do them all right there? Uh, I didn't hear. They never said, where they never said yeah. what they were going to do. But anyway, uh, yeah. Okay, so it's good to know that there's one there. I hope that guy made it to one because it didn't show up online. And that's how people are supposed to be able to find that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, we well, there's always people hanging out at the inn at night. You could just stop and ask where the nearest charger is. All right, Johnny knows. Right. Johnny Isom knows where it is. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously, any other, the wrong person. Any other new business or old business <laughs> or reports? This is just a really quick one, but, um, and we probably don't have an update on it, but uh, it would be great to talk about the EMT project at some point and see where they're at. We had with the town oh, garage. Yeah. Oh, Harvard Rescue. Rescue. Oh, they Harvard. asked if they could build the building in our outside of their building, and I, I'm supposed to talk to you guys about that, and I don't think it's a good idea, so, so I didn't okay. bring it up. <laughs> I got you decided for us. Good work. I don't, <laughs> good work. I'm not, I don't did you see the story about Lila Mall or I, whatever? I don't want to give away oh, any more space. I don't want to give away any more space. Oh my goodness, you got me all worked We need a plan up there. Yeah. 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 Were we going to do that about half a dozen years ago? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. started. Yes. Okay. It was I, I decided we needed a good yeah, right. I think yes, Casey, Casey and I talked about putting, um, budgeting for an engineering and design study for a municipal complex up here. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's the only way we're going to get started. Yep. I need to pay some. We need to get a private yes. shovel ready there. And then yes. Yeah. And then we can yeah. find fun. Just get it over with. Yeah. I'm with you. And I think it's we time. might move up there too. Cool. What, you mean out of the basement? <laughs> yeah. Why? No way. Right on the road. What's the I knew once we get the police department there on space. <laughs> so. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else is going to We had a circuit bill <laughs> this week. Just out of the blue, good thing we were there. And it it fried a bunch of wires in the conduit down in the basement. So, that's yeah. Good. Good thing so, you wet. so, I agree that's a great idea, but we need to have a plan for this building. Yep. Who's going to be in it? Who's going to be in charge of it? The clerk. Tanya clerk will still be Turn con Yeah, town clerk. The records still have to, they're yeah. harder. See, the work. problem with a building of this size is it's expensive. Mm -hmm. To keep operating, I, I agree, but you know what I'm saying. We got. I hear you. I've been racking my brain to think of what, all the crap. I mean, you walk around the building, 
walk. It's gonna be a great building for yeah, the civic no, no, it's, it's, I, I would I it's, would like to refer it, like we need we need to do some of this building. Right. Like we need to but make it better. I don't believe your office is an important part of that. No. Um, I think you could that certainly would be better off in a complex and yeah. you don't that's need a lot of space or anything, but we still way down the road, yeah. We, you know, that's a big deal. Take care of this building and it's gonna to be a big deal right off, especially if it's just empty. Yeah. No, no, we, we don't, don't want to do that. It's not going to be empty. But you're right. We have to look for what the use is going to be to keep it active. It's got to be part of the. It's got to be part of the community. Yep. For sure. Part of the plan. All right. Awesome. Yep. That is a, that is a fantastic update right there. I am so happy to hear that. One right hour, seven o'clock. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Can I just add one? Here we go. Oh, look at them. Just just take half an hour. <laughs> No, I just wanted to uh, give a thanks to the uh, Hardwick Rescue Squad. I forgot to mention this. Uh, they gave us two brand new AEDs uh, for our cruisers. The ones we had, the batteries were getting there obsolete, but they were donated to us from Hardwick Rescue as well. So, awesome. what were they? I'm sorry. AEDs. Oh. Yes. That's great. Which stands for. Automatic. Automatic defibrillator. Automatic emergency. Is the E emergency? AED. Yeah. Defibrillator? Dude. I don't remember. No, he's from Lamont County, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, automatic. I don't know, but if you uh, just yeah. want it to work, I want to make sure it works if I need it. That's right. You don't want one with a with a dodgy battery. Oh, I don't. <laughs> All right, that's great. Thank you, and thanks to Heart of Rescue. All right. All nope, that she I had is just that I need you guys to sign signatures. Thanks. So. Uh, okay, pass those around and then we're going to adjourn. Well, That's I want to say one thing. I looked at this um, <laughs> pass while we're signing. I looked at Mike's, uh, these two, from 22 to 23. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll look at those. We should really look at these. We did look at those. This is amazing. We just missed Danny observed and that the numbers at the, the bottom are different. Are the scales are different, right. too. So it's actually better than the first glance because you have to. At look first glance, it doesn't look better. When right. At first glance, it looks like a very minimal change. <laughs> Good job. Mm -hmm. Town is safe. Mm -hmm. It's one of the species in the Safe my house. Uh, Oh, and I need to sign the minutes. Yeah. Oh, that's right back. This is this this union back. Is there something here that we need to sign? There's yes. three different pages. And right, but, but these that are one are. is just Eric. The top one is Eric only. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. and then um, the and then we've yeah. got three different spots. And uh, then. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of the library, about anything, any <laughs> updates on that? <laughs> yeah, I was hoping. It, I didn't know if you'd heard if how the redesign was coming or if there's any. I I missed the meeting. I mean, this week. zero movement. I don't think they actually had it this week. There's a meeting next week. I mean, last time they got to do something with the hole before winter, right? I mean, they're pumping water still, so last time uh, uh, yeah. said he would at least get something wind up the ground. them up to yeah. update us when there's an update. Yeah. I mean, because they said construction it's, season it's is. So I know it's open. You can still get books. Yeah, yeah. I can't read. Actually, you can return books too. My daughter says you get. I get books on my. Oh. Yes, you can. They'll from the library. library. They'll read right to me. Yes. Right from the library? You can, you can get yes. those from the library. Mm -hmm. You don't even I like to read. go there. I like there. reading better than I like walking, I can tell you that. <laughs> you, you know what? You can do both if you're listening. Uh, yes, uh, adjourn. <laughs>